<clears throat> Hello everyone. Today we'll discuss about uh, Argo workflow. So what is Argo workflow? How to set it up and have some sample Argo workflows uh, created and running. So first of all, what is Argo workflow? So I will uh, open this link and you can see Argo workflow definition and all those things defined here. It is an open source container native workflow engine for orchestrating parallel jobs on Kubernetes. So this is a sort of workflow engine over Kubernetes and it's a container native workflow engine. Container or Kubernetes container here. So if you don't know Kubernetes, then I suggest you go and uh, you know, read and learn about Kubernetes. I have around, I think 10 hours video on Kubernetes on my channel. Please go through and uh, go through that and learn about it. But if you know Kubernetes, then uh, welcome to Argo workflow sessions. So what we'll do in this is uh, we'll go over uh, some of the things uh, you know, I how to set it up. I will show the UI, then how to create a sample workflow on the UI, then I how to create the same workflow from the CLI, and then uh, there are certain template types, uh, and we'll go over those template types if you want to run a script or we want to create some Kubernetes resource like config map, how to do that using Argo workflow. So we'll go over this. So let's start first, how to set the Kubernetes. I have set up the Kubernetes on my machine, so I'm not going to follow, you know, execute all of the things in the setup uh, documentation because I've already done it. <laughs> but uh, if you're setting it for the first time, then go to this link. Uh, there are two types of setup which documentation uh, mentions. One type of setup is uh, if for production, if you're, you know, setting it up on production or deploying on production, then documentation is different. This is for your local environment or test environment. And you, if you have one of these mini cube kind, uh, this or Docker desktop, uh, you can set up Argo workflow there, or you can uh, learn this uh, online using Killer Code, uh, you know, course website. Uh, I have set up doc, I have set Docker desktop set up on my machine, so I have followed all the instructions here. So you create a namespace Argo, then you apply, uh, you know, give this command YAML file command to install Argo. Then for local uh, setup, you want to you know disable some sort of authentication, so use this command to be able to log into the UI directly. Then port forwarding command because you will be accessing UI from your browser, which is on your local host from that browser to the <clears throat> to the deployment, Argo deployment. So this port forwarding command needs to be done. So all of them, you have to do the CLI setup, use this command to do the CLI setup. And there are some examples. If you want to see the list of workflows in Argo namespace, this is a command. You want to see the latest one, this is a command and things like this. And you want to see the logs, you can see this, of course, uh, you know, Port forwarding command is mentioned here. So once you have all these things set up, then you should be able to go to this URL localhost two four two seven four six, and you click it, then you can see this uh, page. So it shows all the uh, workflows which have been submitted uh, to Argo workflow. Important thing to note is you can give the namespace under which the workflows run under some namespace. If you don't specify any namespace, then they run under default workspace, <laughs> default namespace. Sorry, you can select your namespace here. Correct. So now what we'll go do, what we'll do now is, uh, you have seen the UI, I might talk to you about namespace text box. Now we'll create a new workflow from the UI itself. And you can see this button, submit new workflow. Click on this button. There are two options, select a workflow template or edit using full workflow options. We'll click on this. Then we'll click, this is a YAML. There are two types, uh, you know, YAML, JSON or YAML. We'll click on YAML. You can see it's already highlighted. And then we'll delete this and create our own delete this also uh, we'll just copy paste this this is the workflow from ui so now just say create and you can see this uh, workflow is executing click on this then you can see the logs and still waiting so this workflow just said hello from sandeep because i am just echoing this using this image and uh, this is the entry point of uh, workflow and this is the name of the workflow I have given the prefix and after that it will put some three letters, random letters. That's what direct name means. It's just a prefix. And that is what it ended up doing. Some random letters or you know numbers or something it has put. And you can see that from here. Click on this. You can see all the workflows. This was the latest one. It, you know, hello from SKS hyphen was a prefix. And after that it added some random things. And again, you can click this. You can see the logs which we saw. You can see the manifest, which is nothing but the YAML file which we had given. It added some some the things is on, but in a sense it's the same similar YAML which you had given. 
So this is how you create a workflow on the UI. Now what we'll do is uh, go back here. We will create the similar workflow from the CLI also. So you would have set up the CLI already if you followed the installation instructions. So <clears throat> what we'll do is we'll have the, you know, the YAML file created. In this YAML file, we'll have this API version, the kind workflow we have to specify here because we are submitting from outside the UI. Then you have to give the name, which again, the generate name with some prefix and some random characters or letters. Uh, Argo workflow will put, I want to run this workflow in Argo namespace. And this is my template. I want to have this the same thing. I want to have this Docker image and I want to run the bash command on this and bash command says hello from Sandeep. So I have already created that workflow. So you can see get hello workflow YAML. It's the same thing. So what I will do is I will run this. So controller hello. I had done this earlier. Just want to run this command. This is the command you can submit. Now if you see, I have already given the namespace here. So I want to submit this workflow. I can say Argo submit this file name and hyphen f and watch means it will be watching this <laughs> workflow on the command line also. If I don't specify the namespace here, I can always give hyphen and argo in the command line also. So I'll run this and it finished fast because it's watching when it's over, it, it gives some error. So ignore this error, it's not found, which is already completed. And you can see this 17k6q. So you can go to the UI, it's already there, 17k6q, just, you know, some second finished some seconds ago, correct? So click on this, click on this icon. I have given only one, you know, step into the, you know, one thing into the workflow. Eventually we'll see in the further sessions, if you give multiple, if you want multiple steps to be executed in the workflow, how to do it, we'll cover that in subsequent sessions, but you can click on this and then see the logs. You'll see the similar logs here and you can see it got, got over and then there is no error as such, correct? So we have run this uh, workflow from the UI also, from the CLI also. Now, what we'll do is if you go to this uh, link, uh, the core concepts of Argo workflow. So I was following that. And what they say is that after talking about the workflow, the workflow spec and everything, they talk about template types also. There are six template types divided into two different categories. One is template definitions. So in template definitions, there are container, there are scripts, there is resource, there is suspend, and uh, then template invokers. So today we'll just discuss container, script, and resource. Um, so container we've already seen. So in the template definition, you are giving the image. So this is the image we had given in hello uh, workflow example also. So if you see this, see this, this image we had given. So this is a container and this is a container, uh, you know, template, correct? Template container and this is the image we had given. The next one is the script. If you want to run, so this is a convenience wrap around a container, the spec, is spec is the same as the container, but adds resource as the source field, which allows you to find a script in place. So you can go through this. Important thing is that if there's an output of the, you know, uh, this the result of the script, then it will be, you know, saved into this Argo variable. This is the name of the variable, depending upon how we call it. And we'll discuss Argo variable things later. So this is a script and we have, uh, I have created some workflow with this script. So you can see, it's the same thing, uh, you know, I have given this script workflow one hyphen hyphen, then some random character will generate and run, run the name. namespace Argo itself. Main thing is here, I have given the script here in the template is the script. I'm using this image 3.18, they, they are using 3.6, I'm using the 3.18. This image appears in hub.docker.com and it's a Python, comma, Python script. So I given this source, import Python and there, you know, like, like the example here, it's getting some top number between one to hundred. I am also get same. I copied pasted here. I am also getting random number between one to hundred. Then uh, I print that number. Then I print some uh, you know uh, static uh, sentencing Argo script workflow example. So now let's run this. So this is a command. We will always use Argo submit command to run this. Argo submit script. This one correct. So let's run this. Watch it. It got over pretty fast. So let's go to the UI and see if this is running, it's, it takes some time to, you know, refresh it. So click here, you can see this, it succeeded. You can see the logs, uh, it was random number it picked up was 66 and whatever I printed Argo script workflow example, uh, which I had mentioned here. So it, it printed that also in the UI. So this is how you run some Python script using Argo workflow on the container. The next one is, so let's go back to the main page. The next one is, so this is the um, uh, 
uh, so this we run the uh, run the uh, hello thing script thing now the next one is resource resource is basically if you go to this documentation back again you can see the resource of uh, performs operational cluster resources directly what are cluster resources config map job secrets and things like this so uh, in this example they are trying to create a config map so when i was trying to create config map it was giving me some permission error. I had used, you know, the name sips Argo. So it had given me permission error that, you know, you cannot create config map in Argo namespace. Then I tried to create somewhere else. It again gave permission error. So then uh, I then I created, uh, you know, uh, a separate namespace, a separate service account, and I gave permission to that service account, and I created a separate role. So separate namespace, separate role, separate service account, then gave the permission to that service account uh, to uh, to have that uh, role so i'll walk you through this and uh, you know i'll explain this in detail so what i did was um, so first of all i created a new 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 namespace called test so you can use this command to create a new namespace uh, cubes it will create namespace test assume this is the namespace you want to create for your application so you have an application you want to deploy uh, on the containers in this namespace so I have given test, but you can give any name. Let's say this is, you know, your customer application. So you can namespace a customer application namespace or something. So once you create, you can, you know, get the namespaces using groups UTL get namespace. So I already created this test namespace is already there. So around 106 minutes back, I had six minutes back I had created. Now then you create a new service account in namespace test. So this is the command to create the service account, uh, create service account, test service account, and then you can get the service account you created by running this command. I had already created this. So you can see the service account. It was created 82 minutes back. But you can create using this command. Now I want to check whether using this service account, right? I can, uh, you know, create config map. I can create config map in test workflow. So this is my service account. This is my, you know, uh, as system service account and this service account I had created it in this namespace. So, uh, and so that appears here. Then I can run this command and say kubectl auth, can I create config map using this service account in namespace test? So first time you run it, you will get answer as no. Let me run this. I'm getting answer yes, because I have done the setup, which I'm going to explain you now. So, but you will get no initially. So first I, what I did was I created a new role and this role, uh, you know, this is the YAML to create this role. So let's go through this YAML. So cat role, this is the role. So what I'm saying in this role is of course type uh, kind this role and whatever version, this is a test, you know, namespace under namespace mm -hmm. test I'm creating. This role has some permissions, get list, watch, create, update, patch and delete on these resources, secrets and config maps. So this is the role I have created. Then uh, what I created is I created a uh, no, service account I had already created role. I have already no role I created now using this. Now I want to bind this service account to the role. So this is the YAML file. So get role bind YAML. So you can see this, right? This is the role binding type. And uh, this is the namespace test. So this service account, this is the name of the service account which I created. If you can see, this is the same name. So under in namespace test, this service account with this name, uh, in this namespace, of course, uh, get assigned to get assigned this role. And this is the name of the role which I had created earlier, role test account here, right? You can see in, in the role, role test account. So I'm assigned, uh, I'm adding the service account, uh, this service account, test service account to this role. Now, after I run this, now this uh, service account will have all the success, uh, all access to these resources uh, on namespace test. And when you run this after the, you know, after you set this up, then you'll also get yes. So I have given the, I have created a test namespace. I have created a service account on that test namespace. I have created a role on the test namespace called test service account, sorry, uh, some test role. Then this test service account has made been made part of that role now that role has permissions to create update delete get a config map as well as secrets in the test uh, namespace so once that is done now now i can create the uh, config map on the test namespace using argo workflow 
so you can see this so this is our goal this is the type workflow uh, and of course in the namespace test i am running this uh, you know this is the name of the workflow then this uh, and this workflow will use this test service account uh, with uh, and run uh, create this create a resource of type config map so create resource of type config map and then this config config map will have this uh, you know prefix name prefix and in this config map i am passing uh, one key value pair key one and value one so when i create this so let's you know uh, run this again so this was kubectl kubectl create hyphen f okay oh sorry this is the this side we need to do this actually you can do this or instead of doing that you can say argo argo submit resource i think i have not done this but let's submit this resource submit resource yaml and watch this correct so this resource also seem to be have this workflow also seem to have run now so let's go here uh, go here and refresh this okay now i have to delete this because the namespace it was not running in workflow but it was in test namespace so i deleted this namespace it gave me workflows on all the namespace so i clicked on this it finished i click on the logs so you can see this right you know resource whatever whatever got created and all those things you can see the logs but i want to verify this this thing got created or not and by the way let's look at the logs again and i want to check uh if there's an error or not there is no error all the messages are info message and it created the uh this uh this config map config map with this name 6mktd okay so now i'll go to that namespace and get all the config maps in that namespace so for that the command kubectl get config map so i don't want to type whole commands so i'll just c o n f i g uh, control r huh. so i want to get the config maps not this sorry control r control r huh. in this namespace so this is just now got created 6 mk some 75 seconds back and this is the same name 6 mktd i had created before also now i want to see the details of this um, namespace so this cube city describe command you can see that this is the namespace uh, i want to see the details paste i want to the details of the names which i just created which was hyphen 6 m a t d correct so you can see this is the uh, name uh, config map in text workflow and this has this data key key one value one this is what i had passed so that is about it thank you very much